الله حي ذو امتناع أولاً وما وما له مكان سبحانه قد جل عن أين وكيف وزمان قال المؤلف رحمه الله Said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وقد قال علي رضي الله عنه علي has said, may Allah accept him. كان الله ولا مكان وهو الآن على ما عليه كان Allah was and there was no place and he is now as he was. That's narrated by Abu Mansur al-Baghdadi. All right. So here, this statement of Imam Ali, you're not going to use that as your fundamental evidence. Rather, in this topic, you're going to use as your fundamental evidence two other hadiths. Can Allah wa lam yakun shay'un ghayruhu? The hadith of Imran ibn Hussain. Allah existed and there was nothing other than him because that's a hadith of the Prophet, number one. Narrated by Bukhari. Also, the other hadith, أنت الظاهر فليس فوقك شيء وأنت الباطن فليس دونك شيء Which means that nothing is above Allah and nothing is below Allah. Even this one is not probably going to be your first hadith. Most precisely and accurately and swiftly you should start with the hadith of Imran ibn Hussain, even over the ayah, Laysa kamithlihi shay. Because there's no way for them to even misunderstand the hadith of Imran ibn Hussain. And there's no way for them to debunk it because it's narrated by Bukhari. As for this saying of Imam Ali, it's not going to be your fundamental evidence because the first thing that a Wahhabi is going to say to you is that there's no chain for this. Then, your next move will be to defend why you can use it despite, that, despite the absence of a chain. And now you have just derailed yourself. You've been derailed. Now you're arguing why you should, why this statement is authentic or not instead of arguing whether Allah exists without a place or not and also for other things that a Wahhabi might say to you for this statement of Ali such as if he says the correct rule that the names and attributes of Allah are not confirmed by the statements of companions and followers tabi'un that's a correct rule then what are you going to do with that so don't start there, then why is this here, this here, this is here for istitnas. This statement is for those who already have the right belief. Or for who's listening. Not to argue with the opponent. But notice though that the Shaykh, he said, Qala Ali. He said it. That's called, according to the people of Hadith, Sigatu Jazm. That means a statement of definitiveness. He's saying he said it. He's not saying it was said. Rawahu Abu Mansur in Il Baghdadi. That's reported by Abu Mansur al Baghdadi. And there are other statements of Imam Ali. Not just these, not just this one, others, at least two others in my mind now. That Imam Ali cleared Allah from a place, not just from limits also. Not the ones you might know already, like Manza'ama anna ilahana mahdud faqad jahil al khaliq al ma'bud. Whoever claims that our God is limited, then he is ignorant about the worshipped creator. Not that one. Also, you might know the other statement of Ali, 
إن الله خلق العرش إن الله خلق العرش إظهارا لقدرته Certainly Allah created the arsh as a demonstration of his power وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْهُ مَكَانًا لِذَاتِهِ And he did not take it as a place for himself. Not that one also. There's other statements from Imam Ali that clear Allah Ta'ala from place. Specifically. And from the family of Ali. Also from Ahlul Bayt. Call. He said, Asharhu, the explanation. Can Allah, Allah was a fil azal, meaning in eternity. Wala makan, and there was no place. A wala miyakun makanun, meaning there was not existing any place. Wa huwa al an, and he is now a ba'da an khalaq al makan, meaning after he created the place, ala ma alayhi kan. As he was. A lam yazal mawjud and bila makan. Meaning he never ceased to be existing without a place. The anna hu la yajuzu alayhi taghayyuru wa tatawur. Because it is not possible for him changing and developing. Wal intiqalu min halin ila hal. And transfer from state to state. Qala al muallifu rahimahullah. Said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وَلَيْسَ مِحْوَرُ الْإِعْتِقَادِ عَلَى الْوَهْمِ And not is the... Uh, the axis. وَلَيْسَ مِحْوَرُ الْإِعْتِقَادِ عَلَى الْوَهْمِ And the axis of conviction is not imagination or delusion. بَلْ عَلَى مَا يَقْتَضِيهِ الْعَقْلُ الصَّحِيحُ السَّلِيمِ Rather, it is upon what is dictated by the sound, correct intellect. الَّذِي هُوَ شَاهِدُ لِشَرَعَ That intellect which is a witness for the religious law. What does it mean that the intellect is a witness for the religious law? It means, that's a way of saying, the religious law is correct. The religious law is correct and undeniable to the intellect. So that when the intellect sees it, he will testify. That's how the intellect is a witness for the law, for the shara, the sacred law. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ الْمَحْدُودَ مُحْتَاجٌ إِلَى مَنْ حَدَّهُ بِذَلِكَ الْحَدِّ And that's because the limited one is in need of whoever limited him with that limit. فَلَا يَكُونُ إِلَاهَا And so he would not be a god. الشرح The explanation الوهم والتخيل قد يجتمعان من حيث المعنى Waham, delusion, and tahayyul, imagination, qad yajitamiyani min haithul ma'ana. They could be synonymous. Qad yajitamiyan, they could possibly merge in meaning. Wa mihwa ru'ti qadi al Muslim laysa ala al waham. And the axis of the Muslim's conviction is not upon. Waham, delusion. لِأَنَّ الْوَهْمَ يَحْكُمُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ يُشَاهِدْهُ بِحُكْمِ مَا شَاهَدَهُ Because the delusion judges what it never, what, what one never witnessed in accordance with what he did witness. That's what the wahm does. It judges what is not witnessed by what is witnessed. Very important. The kuffar and some other mis miseducated people, they don't know what uh, observation even means. Like, 
how would someone say that evolution is observed? You ever met someone who said, they will say that. They will say evolution is observed. Unless he's really, really, really an honest one, he won't say it. So, what's delusion? Delusion is, what's wahum, yani? It is to judge what has not been witnessed by what has been witnessed. So you never witnessed it, and then you, you establish your judgment. That's the wahum. فَيَحْكُمُ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْجُودٌ بِمَكَانٍ And thus, the wahum would judge that Allah is existing in a place. أَمَّا الْعَقْلُ السَّلِيمُ فَيَقُضِي بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْجُودٌ بِلَا مَكَانٍ As for the sound intellect, it dictates, it judges, judges that Allah is existing without a place. Same thing, what we said about the indivisible particle, or maybe that was in other lessons. How do we even know that there's something called an indivisible particle? By a mental judgment, not by an imagination, because it cannot even be imagined. And an indivisible particle cannot even be imagined. So you cannot judge that by your imagination. You must only judge it by your intellect. So, then, what's the sickness, what's the blindness, what's the cripple, the handicap, what's the handicap of a likener and a body worshiper? He cannot think beyond his imagination. He's retarded in this way. Inshallah, Allah will remove his retardation. <laughs> وَمِحْوَرُ اعْتِقَادِ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْعَقْلِ السَّلِيمِ The axis of the conviction of the Muslim is upon sound intellect. لَيْسَ عَلَى الْوَهْمِ Not upon وَهْمِ delusion. لِأَنَّ الْعَقْلَ لَا يَرُدُّ ذَلِكَ Because the intellect does not reject this, that God exists without a place. وَيُسَلِّمُ بِهِ Rather, the intellect grants that. Because you say, if God is in a place, then where was he before he created places? So, the intellect then accepts that God exists without a place. And it grants that. As for the delusion, it will depict things that have no reality. For example, you've, maybe you've never been in my house. I don't know if any of you have ever been in my house. So if you've never been in my house, if you've never seen that, then how could you imagine that? So what would you do when you go to someone's house, when you're going to someone's house? I remember as a kid, every time I went to someone's house, I was always surprised to see their house because it wasn't like I imagined. Because you won't be able to imagine something that you never saw before. وَمِثَالُ ذَلِكَ and An example of that لَوْ نَظَرَ إِنسَانٌ إِلَى الْبَحْرِ Had one looked into the sea عند الغروب At sunset وَهْمُهُ يَقُولُ لَهُ إِنَّ السَّمَاءَ مُلْتَصِقَةٌ بِالْبَحْرِ His delusion or imagination would say to him that the sky is stuck to the sea or connected to the sea يعني in the horizon وَإِنَّ الشَّمْسَ تَنْزِلُ فِي الْبَحْرِ And that the sun dips into the sea or descends into the sea. لَكِنَّ الْوَاقِعَ غَيْرُ ذَلِكَ However, the reality is other than that. يعني, let's say someone was ignorant. Like he's a mushrik, a pagan on an island with a loincloth. Maybe he thinks that the sky goes into the earth at its horizon and that the sun dips into the sea and so we look into the intellect and we don't look into the imagination or the delusion that's what the scientists do much 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 if not most of what they say is imagination don't you know all those dinosaurs are imagined all that stuff they imagined it all of it 
Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, they, they imagined all that stuff. Pteranodon, etc. And now that they can make these movies, they made the Indominus Rex. All of it is the Khayyol. وَإِذَا قَالَ الْمُشَبِّهَةُ كَيْفَ يُقَالُ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ مُتَصِلًا بِالْعَالَمِ وَلَا مُنْفَصِلًا عَنْهِ And if the likeners were to say, how would it be said that Allah is neither connected to the world nor disconnected from it? هَذَا لَا يَقُبَلُهُ الْعَقْلُ This is something that the intellect does not accept. He's wrong there. That's something that his imagination is disabled from. And his handicap is that he cannot think past his imagination. Once he was unable to imagine it, he became unable to conceive it. So that's his mental cripple. Or that's his blindness. It is said to them, The intellect accepts it. However, the imagination does not imagine it, does not depict it. Just as the delusion cannot depict the lack of light and darkness together, fi an in wahid. At once, yani simultaneously, qabla an yukhlaqa, before they were ever created, the two of those, they weren't existing. The, the existence of our, other things are not dependent upon the existence of light and dark. So before those two were existing, Allah had already created things and they weren't in darkness because there wasn't any darkness yet. And they weren't in light because there wasn't any light yet. So we can't imagine that لِأَنَّهُمَا خُلِقَا بَعْدَ خَلْقِ الْمَاءِ وَالْعَرْشِ وَالْقَلَمِ وَالْلَوْحِ Because those have been created, those two have been created after the creation of the water, the arsh, the pen, and the tablet. كَمَا دَلَّ عَلَى ذَلِكَ حَدِيثُ عِمْرَانَ بْنِ الْحُسَيْنِ With an L there, sometimes it appears, it's appearing with an L, sometimes not. Ibn Husayn here. Ibn al Husayn, as the hadith of Imran ibn Husayn proves, كان الله ولم يكن شيء غيره Allah was and there was nothing other than him. وكان عرشه على الماء and his arsh was over the water. وكتب في ذكر كل شيء and he wrote, يعني he had written, he made be written into the ذكر, which is the guarded tablet. Everything, etc. Notice here that the Shaykh he took the time to repeat the hadith. You will notice that the Shaykh has a lot of repetition in his books. That's part of his style. And that's part of what makes him a murabbi. A murabbi. He's a scholar who raises people up. Had the Shaykh not been repeating what he was repeating, then we would not be the people we are. Literally repeating Laysa Kamislihi Shay. And if he wanted, he could have said, as proven by the hadith of Imran ibn Husayn that was already mentioned. Fa'inna kawlahu, for indeed his saying, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa kataba fi zikri kulla shay, he wrote into the zikr everything, yuridu bihi al qalam al a'la wa lawha al mahfuz. He means by it, the high pen and the guarded or preserved tablet. Dalla hadha al hadith wa ala anna ha ula il arubata awalul makhlukat. This hadith proves that those four things are the first creations. Fayufhamu min dalika anna hu lam yakhlukin nura wa zalama illa baada ha ula il arbaa. And so it is understood from that that he did not create light and darkness except after these four things. So what intellect would understand the reality of that? That's what the Shaykh said here. As if the word aql though in this spot means wahm. As if. Because he already said and we already know that the intellect does not reject this. The intellect submits to this. 
to the possibility of that, of light and dark existing uh, after some things already existed, not being the first creations. The existence of things without light or darkness, the intellect submits to that, to the possibility of that. So when he says, what intellect understands the reality of that? As if he's saying, what imagination can imagine that? And with that being not understandable to the human, mean, meaning here unimaginable, with that being something that the human cannot understand it, meaning he cannot imagine it, we believe in it. Because Allah informed about that. By his saying, Which means, Praise be to Allah who created heavens and earth and he made the darkness and the light. So if he made the darkness and the light, that means they weren't existing, both of them. And so we don't say that darkness is the absence of light. We say darkness is a body that Allah creates and light is a body that Allah creates. It's not just the absence of light. Darkness is not the absence of light. As if to say it's not something. It is something. It's a body. So then it alternates with the light. Darkness and light alternate. <laughs> Subhan